And that loss here in the Dome last year was the worst loss that Carolina has ever suffered in this building. Duke with the opening tip. Check some matchups early here. Lang Mattier. Forte Carrollwell. That will be a senior on a freshman. And Nate James drills a three out of the corner. He has been kind of the quiet assassin for this team. Comes up with those games where he gets 11 to 15 points. Really hurts because it's not what you're counting on having to stop. Forte gets a screen from Lang and hits it. Great job by Forte using the screen properly. Carrollwell tried to fight through on the inside. Instead of going over the top, Forte changed direction. I think Carrollwell will try to back him in for that turnaround jumper and use his height advantage. Shane Battier, nothing but net. And Junior from Michigan, averaging 15 and a half a game. And Duke has hit its first two shots. Duke has played five games this year, which they've scored more than 100 points. This is off to one of those high scoring touch contests. Haywood lost the ball, then Duke took it out of bounds. Carolina with it, and 23 seconds on the shot clock. Haywood last year in the three games fouled out of two and had four fouls in the other one. He's got to be a key in this game. And Bob, as you pointed out, Duke giving up a lot of, of offensive rebounding opportunities. Haywood has got to get on the boards. Straight man, the out of bounds. They missed Capel for an easy bounce pass layup. Lang shot it short. Now Jason Williams. Gives it up to Carrollwell. And his three-pointer. A little long. Battier fights for the rebound and it's controlled by Ed Cota. Ed Cota, excellent rebounding guard as his 48. Tremendous anticipation by Carrollwell. He's kind of laying in the weeds. He's like a defensive back back there, and the quarterback thinks he's got an open area on the field. Carrollwell just picked it off. Battier pumps it inside. Here's Carrollwell. There's the back down you talked exactly. about, Billy. See, now Forte is going to have a very difficult job trying to handle Carrollwell with that turnaround jumper down inside. And he will take advantage of it. He's a very smart player. Coda for three. And Battier clears. But I tell you, if I were a Carolina person, I would say that's a good sign to see Ed Coda putting up some shots early. Long rebound. And it's Caper. Into the paint. And stripped by Jason Williams. Duke with the numbers. Three on two break behind the back to Boozer. Blocked by Haywood. Should have passed it out to the side to James, who was wide open for a three, and then Boozer could have got in position for the rebound. Wow, too tall even for Haywood. Williams, there's the kick to the corner. James had a better look than the other one. Boozer. And Capel is on the back of Nate James. Jason Capel with his first foul. Take a look at the break right here. It goes to Boozer. He should have kicked out to James. He forced a, a jump shot from the outside, gotten in position to rebound, because Haywood would have probably had to go out to at least make an attempt on the open shot. Julius Peppers is in for the Tar Heels. Carrollwell, no, with the three. And Nate James over the back. So Nate picks up his first foul. And the Tar Heels trailing 7-2 have the basketball. Breakdown defensively on that inbounds pass. How often we see Duke throw the ball back to the man that took the ball out of bounds. Wide open shot for Carrollwell. Coda ought to try early in this ball game to beat people off the dribble. Nate Williams, who Duke has no replacement for, get into some foul trouble. Coda gives it up. Capel fires. And it's saved by Carrollwell, but out of bounds. Duke's been impressive on the glass early. Well, they really have. It's not a dominating rebounding team, as you pointed out. Only having averaging a little over two rebounds per game more than their opponents. And they have been out-rebounded in ACC games. When you take in consideration, they have the biggest margin of victory of anybody in the ACC, and yet only having two rebound advantage per game. It's unusual. Peppers, no. Haywood watches it go out of bounds. Carolina ball. 
Another thing I'd like to point out in this game, the guy on the Carolina bench who played well against Duke last year is Max Owens. Owens had the big game in the ACC tournament. Sometimes you like to go back and say, hey, if a guy felt comfortable last year, why not give him a shot this year? Not in the game yet, however. Coda backs out of the double team. Needs some help. Gets it in Forte. Forte for three. Carowell looking to break. These long rebounds are going to Carolina on both ends of the floor. And a whistle and a foul inside. Christensen and Boozer. And it's going to go on Christensen. That's first. Well, you can see just a tug of war on the inside. Christensen needs to release and then try to get position. But of course, he's in the game now, and Mike Krzyzewski can afford for Christensen to pick up five fouls and try to wear Hayward down and maybe pick up a cheap one on him. Mike Dunleavy is in for Duke. 7-2 Blue Devils. Nice touch pass. Forte. Battier playing kind of a one-man zone. That's a backcourt back violation. Yep. The fourth North Carolina turnover gives the ball to Duke when we come back. 15-49, first half. Duke 7, Carolina 2. Here we're going to see some inside battling. Now, Mike Krzyzewski's idea here with Christensen is to lean on Haywood, try to wear him on down. Don't worry about fouling out. Nice touch pass by Haywood. He doesn't get it back. One of the things that would concern you if you're North Carolina is that although he leads the nation in field goal percentage, he's taking only seven shots a game. He has got to be more prolific in putting shots up, particularly in this one. And he has not yet attempted a shot in this game. North Carolina goes to the zone. 2-1-2, Max Owens is into the basketball game now. Tar Heels with four turnovers. Duke shooting three of nine. Battier saves him. Still plenty of time on the clock. Kane gets rid of it, Williams for three, short. Waited too long to get the ball to Williams, who was ready for the jump early. Coda in traffic, gives to Owens. Dangerous pass. Coda. And Christensen has it. Pretty strong rebound by Christensen because Coda was ready for his own rebound there. Battier baseline and a block on Julius Peppers. Great idea by Battier. He is such an intelligent player. He realized that Peppers was not in position to guard the baseline. So as soon as he caught it, he took off. Carlos Boozer comes back for Duke. Christensen does his job, sits down. The Tar Heels. One of seven. Duke hot early. They've pulled off. And they draw a foul on Owens. We talked about Duke's lack of getting on the offensive glass. But one thing they do not lack is getting to the foul line. Shooting 75% as a team. And again, shooting more free throws, making more than the other team shoots by almost 60. Jason Williams. Missing the first of two overall this year. Jason Williams hitting 72% at the line, but in ACC play, he's been to the line only 12 times in seven games, making seven. 20 points against Florida State, 19 against Wake Forest. All of these starters have that ability to have the 20-point game. And Williams showed his moxie in Virginia that big three to start overtime helped the Blue Devils win a tough game in Charlottesville. Capel for three. He winds up with that three, but has good range. And North Carolina Duke, stays in the zone. The Duke lead is down to two. You've got all four perimeter players for Duke capable of making the three. Boozer. Coda. Tar Heels look to tie with Cape. Good hit ahead by Coda. North Carolina crowd doing a tremendous job. You can feel the excitement out here the day, the moment you came in this arena. Zone has been effective so far. John Levy, way too long, but inside Battier scores. Four for Shane Battier. Duke leads at 9 7. Coda hasn't yet attempted to take Williams off the he, dribble. He really, there's a five-second count because he is so hesitant, and he, he does not 
put the ball on the floor and penetrate to the basket. He's looking to get other guys involved in the game, but when you look at the weaknesses of Duke, one of the first things that jumps out at you is where do they go if Williams is out of the ball game? And so Coda's being very easy to guard when he stays out there in the perimeter like that. Carraway. Dunleavy. Jump stop. Pumps it up and in. The freshman. Son of Portland Trailblazer head coach Mike Dunleavy. The man uh, never ceases to amaze me as how big he plays. And he shot that ball over Hayward. Owens penetrates and scores. That game you referred to, Billy, in the ACC Finals, Max had 22 against Duke last year, albeit in a losing cause. Well, he had 10 and 3 in another loss. The call? Steve is this Gordon. a technical? We have a yes, technical foul Bill Guthridge. North Carolina and head coach Bill Guthridge. Now, Mike Krzyzewski is looking this one over very closely. It's early in the ball game. Sometimes a coach will do this to instill the fire in his team. Shane Battier, who leads the ACC in free throw shooting. Jason Capel, number two. So we've got the one, two free throw shooters in the league out here. Battier, six points, and we should point out the scorer's table tells us that that technical was charged to the bench and not the head coach. Well, the head coach is very vocal over there. Watch that Mike Krzyzewski baits the officials a little bit to try to even that up. Here's Dunley. But it's a tough team to play a zone against because they've got four guys they can all shoot the three on the floor for Duke. Boozer had it tipped away by Haywood. Battier with 12 on the clock. Puts it home. Well, these upperclassmen, Carowell and Battier, you can't find two headier players. Oh, no. Duke has not shown anything but straight man-to-man. -man. Carolina showed the man-to-man -man and the zone. And again, Coda not looking to penetrate. Forte tries, but Dunleavy shuts him off. And a near steal by Carowell. Cody off the glass, inside Lang goes up, short. Nice. Hollow dunk. Great hustle by Lang, who has really been limited with physical problems, but getting a lot of minutes out here, and that fired him up. They stay in the 2-3 zone. Nate James. It inside. Battier got good position and the foul on Haywood. Excellent ball movement by Duke, even though that pass was a little slow to James in the corner. He was able to hit inside before the zone could get adjusted. I don't know if that ball slipped out of Coda's hands. I assume so, but Lang had a great finish on the other side. So Battier back to the line. So far this year, this young man's 43 blocks. He's now working on 16 charges. As we all know, he's the all-time leader in that department at Duke. Has it down to a science. And the aspect of his game that has come around this year is the outside shot. He's been developing that three-pointer. He's got 31 this year. Well, one of the things that shows that the players that Duke had last year who were so prolific offensively, not there, he just stepped up his game offensively. Timeout in Chapel Hill. We've double checked with the official scorer's table and the technical foul that went against North Carolina was indeed charged to head coach Bill Guthridge and we understand that's the first time that Guthridge has received a tee in his three years as the head coach. Well you can remember when he became a head coach because of a technical foul in the final four yes. when Dean Smith got tossed in the Kansas game. Seventeen eleven blue doubles. Forte gives the Haywood. Battier playing a one-man zone down on the inside. There he is, waiting for Haywood. His first shot of the game goes. Interesting defensive matchup that time by Duke University. 
Didn't pay off for him. Nate James spins. You notice that Haywood is playing a one-man zone now, letting Christensen go wherever he wants to. So what Christensen's got to do is to get ready for an offensive rebound, because Haywood won't know where he is. He'll be in a position to go ahead inside. Shot clock at six. Great change over dribble. Pass inside intercepted by Coda. Christensen should have been there. Second time the ball has slipped out of Coda's hands. 17-13. Intended for Haywood and beyond his reach. Oh, that was a great job. What happened there was you had Battier up front. Christensen went behind. Here we see the dump on the inside. Battier doesn't get there in time. But what happened? Christensen set a, a solid screen. So Haywood couldn't move to the basket. That's why that pass went away. And the sixth North Carolina turnover. Walk. Second Duke turnover. First Carowell coming back into the game for the Blue Devils and Mike Dunleavy Johnson. Mike Krzyzewski going to this bench. A lot of revolving substitutions here in his part, trying to keep the starters fresh. Cody. Ball was kicked to reset of the shot clock for Carolina. Good anticipation by Williams. He sensed that bounce pass was going into Hayward. So much uh, Billy of motion in, in a game like this. You know the players have, have been jacked all week and all day getting ready for the 9 o'clock tip off. Here's Haywood to Lang. Tip off by an end by Forte. And there's that offensive rebounding we talked about before the game. Nobody blocking out Forte is an excellent rebounding guard. Christensen pushed by Haywood. Wow, not a good foul at all. The second foul on Haywood. As I mentioned, Haywood fouled out of two of the three games last year. There's the nice touch by Lang. Doesn't go. But here's Forte. Nobody blocking him out. Comes right on the baseline. Excellent touch. Not much about the game that young man can't do. Big three for Jason Williams. Shooting 39% from three-point range this season. Duke's second three-pointer tonight. One-time rookie of the week for the ACC. Boozer has won twice this year. Forte once as well. Cape. Reversing short. And Battier the rebound and a foul on Cape. Perhaps out of frustration by missing the shot. Capel's second foul. Excellent move by Capel, though, to use the rim to ward off the defenders. He just can't get it to drop. And then, as you said, out of frustration with Battier getting excellent position, Capel picks up the foul. Changes for North Carolina. As Peppers comes back, Max Owens returns. Coda and Haywood go out of the game. Duke moves into the bonus. And again, it's Shane Battier already four for four at the line and ten points tonight. Steps up. Four rebounds to go with those 10 points for Battier. And this is the front end of the one and one. Now, with Coda out of the ball game, North Carolina really susceptible to ball handling problems. Forte, guided by Nate James. Now Nate picks Owens up with the switch. Lang. Okay. Williams, pull up, got this is, it. This is a shaky lineup for North Carolina on the floor right now. I'm surprised Duke's not pressing. 22-15, Blue Devils. Owens from 15, and Carabell rebounds. North Duke Carol really seizing control, yeah. Billy. North Carolina would be better to take a timeout now if, it's, if they're worried about guys being fresh, because the lineup they have on the floor right now is shaky. James fights through and picks up the foul in the rebound. So Nate James with his second. Good nose for the ball by James that time. He just didn't get by with the touch. Here yeah. comes Coda back in the ball game. He just got a blow for what do you think are 35, 40 seconds yeah, of playing time. But it's a good move by Bill Guthridge to get him back on the floor because that was a shaky lineup. As they say in hockey, he only missed one shift. <laughs> 
Well, two times up and down the floor, I guess. 22 15. Big screen by Peppers. Coda misses the three. Too satisfied with the shot. Forte short. Offensive rebounding again, giving Duke all kinds of problems. Have we seen Ed Cota put the ball on the floor with the dribble so far in this game and take it to the basket? The answer is no. Carlos Boozer, guilty of the last foul, sends Gastonia sophomore Chris Lang to the free throw line. Excellent percentage for a big man, 71%. This is the first of two here. He was a, a good shooter last year in close against the Blue Devils in the season series. In those three games, he was 12 of 16. Averaging 8.4 despite all kinds of illness and injury this season. Misses both free throws, but another dance. offensive rebound, and Dunleavy takes it away. Quickly ahead to Carowell. And Chris scores, Carowell with four. Carowell is so good with that back to the basket move. He just goes right over the top of guards. Duke with its biggest lead, 24-15. Really playing some good weak side defense now as Duke. There's a touch foul by Carroll. And Chris with his first. A timeout at the Smith Center. 7.49 remaining in the first half. Mike Krzyzewski's Duke Blue Devils with their 29-game ACC winning streak on the line, leading by nine in Chapel Hill. Here's a pass thrown out of bounds by the Tar Heels. Boy, Another turnover for North Carolina. We are seeing the pattern that we talked about at the top of the show. Carolina turning the ball over. Duke not getting on the, the boards to stop the offensive rebound. Stays in the zone, this Carolina. Horvath also a good three-point shooter. So they surround it with guys that can put it up there. Williams misses the long rebound. Tipped to midcourt and done leaving. Carowell, Williams, nice catch inside by Boozer. They may be freshmen, but they look like they've been playing together for a long time. Don't you love the moxie of Jason Williams? Coda, two assists, three turnovers to date. Could not shoot the ball over the outstretched hands. There's Dunleavy again with another rebound. 26-15 Blue Devils. North Carolina goes back to the man-to-man. -man. This Duke team's a very tough team to zone against. Boozer catches the ball well inside, so you can throw it into traffic, and he can get it back out, and then they surround it with good three-point shooters. Shot clock at five, four, three. Boozer, does he recognize it? Got it off in time. Missed the shot and the rebound to Carolina. You notice that Duke is not getting on the offensive glass very well. Everybody's standing and looking. Coda for three. He's due. Not Levy boards. Coda has not hit a field goal. He's 0 for 4. He's taken some wide open looks from the three point range and has not hit them. I don't know why Duke slowed things down last time and ended up taking a tough shot with five to go. Even though North Carolina changed their defense, Duke should have been ready for it. Not a good shot. Horvath, an air ball. Owens to Cota. Quickly ahead to Forte. Joseph has scored four in the game. Good hands by Duke, and they come up with a steal. Nice toss ahead from Williams to Dunleavy. I tell you, Williams just sees the whole floor, and Dunleavy anticipated the breakaway. Nobody stayed with him for North Carolina. The freshmen are outsmarting guys that are two and three years older. Good backdoor cut by Owens. Andy scores. Excellent maneuver without the ball. 28-17. Duke has not lost a road game in the ACC in two years since this game in February of 98. Carowell deflected. Duke ball, 16 seconds to shoot. Pretty good defense by Forte on Carowell. How about that pass? Oh, beauty. And Shane Battier has a dozen. Duke leads 30-17. Look one way through the other. Battier got in perfect position. 
Battier on Peppers now playing the one-man zone again. Coda gets one to go. He's a 48% three-point oh, yeah. shooter. He, he can make that shot, and you can see in the scouting report, Duke is going to let him take it until he shows that he can make it and will shoot it. More noise from the Tar Heel faithful. Battier won it down in that corner with a jump shot over Peppers. Christensen traveled before the contact. Very mechanical move on the inside, and North Carolina was very fortunate that it was because Haywood already has two fouls. That would have been a tremendous chance for him to pick up the third. Coda. That's the play. Peppers. That's the play. Coda on the dribble, penetrating and freezing the defense. And Duke takes a timeout. For one of the few times in this first half, we saw Coda take the dribble into the paint. And dividends for North Carolina. Timeout at the Smith Center. It's Duke 30 at North Carolina 22. Bob Rathbun, Billy Packer back at the Smith Center, 355. Remaining in this first half, one of the quirks of the timeout rule this year, that was a call timeout by Duke on the next dead ball, another timeout. So it's a chance for this club to kind of catch their breath here in the next minute and play these last 355, three and a half with great passion. There's Ed Cutter who has put up some shots tonight. Four assists, four turnovers, not all bad. But those turnovers are, are made by good dribble penetration inside. Williams to Battier to Carrawell. An immediate double team from Coda. Good split that time by Carrawell. And Boozer had it partially blocked. Haywood takes it down. The scramble is on. Oh, and a hell ball. You see what happened to Haywood? He had the ball and he tried to call a timeout. When he did, he released the ball. The referee didn't give him the timeout. So consequently, they got the jump ball situation. You have to have control of the ball to call the timeout. And we have the timeout, and we'll return after these messages from the Atlantic Coast Conference. Duke 30 and North Carolina 22, 336 remaining in our first half here at the Smith Center. Bob, when you look up there, you see Duke ranked number three. When this arena was open for the very first time, Duke was also ranked number three. Carolina was number one. Here's the play I was talking about before. Watch Haywood. He has the ball in his hands. He says, oh, ref, I want to time out. But he lets the ball go. Now he tries again and gives an opportunity, although he has it in possession with his knees. <laughs> he doesn't have it with his hands. And you can hear Steve Gordon in the background yelling, you don't have it. <laughs> well, Carolina did have the arrow, so they will have possession. But they could have had the possession without having to go ahead and lose the arrow. 30-22. That ball game that was the first one in here ever between a number one ranked Carolina and Duke number three. Carolina won that ball game 95-92. 1986. Doesn't seem possible it was that long ago. Dakota's push shot is short. And he controls and clears to Jason Williams. A little tricky dribble on Coda. Coda did a pretty nice job staying with it defensively. But Williams has that ability to go left or right. Put a number of stutter steps on him, and Coda held his ground. Best thing there is to look right at the guy's chest, because it, it, it'll have to go with the ball. Nice tip away by Boozers. They tried to beat Haywood at the low block. Not a good pass from that far out. Telegraph. That he holds everything up, sets up the offense. We talked about a leader. How about him? Now he's an illegal dribble. What hands? Boozer, will it count? What hands? He is incredible. You know, when Duke lost the only two games of the year to start off with Stanford and Connecticut, two outstanding teams, that was an illegal dribble that time to get it all started. But this man can catch the ball and put it away. The Duke inside game was totally non-existent. Remember Boozer coming off that foot injury. But now this young guy is exploding for some big numbers. 
And one of the reasons he's not only as powerful, but he's got that unusual gift of great hands to catch a ball and then power to go ahead and get it released. His first big minutes came in the game that you did, Billy, in Michigan. Right. And that was really his coming out party. Since then, he has been so consistent. Pressure by the Blue Devils. Oh. And they get the steal. And Williams lays it up and off. Oh, oh. it's touched by Carowell. That's basket interference. Williams got caught under the basket and had to put it back up with his right hand. But again, another turnover by North Carolina when that ball is not caught as in. You see, Williams got caught under there with the right hand. Carowell was just over anxious. So tempting. Big break for North Carolina there. That would have put Duke up by 13. Carolina can get it back into single digits here. Great help, and then another turnover. Nate James with the steal and the bucket. Beautiful jump stop by James to put that up. Go right by Max Owens. And Duke indeed takes it to 13. And it's North Carolina turning the ball over. And not only turning it over, but leading right directly to points. Lang with a big slam and a foul. And he went right by Battier, one of the top defensive players in America, to make that play. Second emphatic dunk of the night for Lang. Right by Battier, no help on the baseline, because Haywood did a good job blocking out Boozer. But Lang's got that ability to take that ball and charge the baseline. This is another free throw the ball out of bounds to do. But I thought he did a great job, Billy, to recognize Battier was up tight on him right. and had the chance to explode past him. Well, normally, if you're Battier, you're going to get help down on that baseline. But Haywood blocked off any chance because he had Boozer pinned. And Carroll wasn't, wasn't about to come from the weak side over and get in Lang's way. Battier, quick shot with men in the paint. And Battier has 14. Duke leads 37-24. There's Boozer again. Good hands inside. The ability to deliver the pass. Off the hands of Haywood. Well, I don't like the way that Carolina's trying to get that ball into Haywood at all. I realize he hasn't had many touches, but they're forcing it in there now. 13 turnovers for the Tar Heels. Carowell and a foul. Our three-second violation against Duke. Our nationwide ACC Scholar Athlete of the Week is Ford Oliver Simmons of Florida State. The graduate student from Nashville, Tennessee, received his bachelor's degree in business this past spring and is pursuing a master's in sports administration. Congratulations to Oliver Simmons of FSU. Florida State, one of the teams that came in here and beat North Carolina on their home floor. A shocking win, 76-71 for the Seminoles. Great hustle. Another Carolina turnover. Here's Williams. And he drills it again. Seven for Jason Williams. Duke leads by 15. If North Carolina is to make this a game in the second half, they have to take better care of the basketball. Forte. Kind of a wild shot. Well, what made it wild is Dunleavy at that six foot eight or nine altered the shot. Very good first half of execution by Duke University. And they're going to make North Carolina come out after. North Carolina's going to sit back in there, so they'll go ahead and get it down to about five seconds. Carolina will get the ball back. Dunleavy. Solid screen. Offensive rebound for Duke and Carowell. As now. Haywood's third. Up for three for Brendan. No block out on Carowell. An excellent solid screen for Dunleavy at the top of the key. Now they've got to get Haywood out of the ball game right here because he's got three. He could pick up a touch fourth. I don't see any movement there. They've got to get him out of the game. Well, they do have a uh, uh, newbie at the scores time. Yeah, but there is 17 6 left. I'll tell you what, if he misses this shot, they won't be able to get him back in. Carowell will shoot two. Here he comes. My goodness, he's going to stay in the game. So Forte is the man who goes out. Wow, this is a very dangerous move by Carolina. Big man with three fouls. Carowell with six. 
41-24. Well, if you're Duke right now, if you're Christensen, you should bang and bang and bang on Haywood, see if you can get a retaliation foul. Coda, high screen, six, five. Coda slips, knocked away by Carwell, off the foot of Owens. He fires, and the first half ends. The Duke Blue Devils have come to Chapel Hill and have taken this game right away from North Carolina. It's halftime at the Smith Center with Duke leading 41 to 24 over the Tar Heels. The second half about to begin here at the Smith Center sold out for the Duke game, of course, and noisy early, but the Tar Heels haven't been able to help the crowd out here as Duke has dominated. Foul difficulties, Billy. Brendan Haywood, three to start the second half. Jason Capel also with three, but Haywood with the first half, I'm sure he'd like to forget. Well, excellent defense by North Carolina and really not a good conceptual idea to how to get him the ball by North Carolina. So consequently, he was no factor in the first half. As a matter of fact, uh, he played that last 17 seconds in a very precarious situation with three fouls on him. We hear coaches often say the first five minutes of each half is crucial. Battier comes out, and Duke jumps the lead to 19. That's where he's so versatile. Lang has no chance guarding him 15, 18 feet from the basket. You just get the feeling, at least I do, Billy, that Carolina's got to make a move here. Get Duke's attention somehow. Cable and air ball, and it's out of bounds to the Blue Devils. Duke already with a 19-point advantage. It's amazing in the 90s, Duke in the ACC was 109 and 47, Carolina 108 and 48. So yeah. you can see how that 10 year period, these teams were so evenly matched, but not so far tonight. And it came down to the last regular exactly. season game last year that decided it. Here's Battier outside to Carowell. Chris is running with a wow, hand in his face. No Out to Cota. He had a hand and then some in the face. Cota for three. Good. Coda has really been aggressive with his outside shooting tonight, but not so with his penetration dribble. And he does have the outside shot. Wow, that was drive by James. And over the back. Nate James picks up his third. Dunleavy probably coming in for him. Mike very patient sitting over there on the bench. Boy, he's playing with house money. Yeah, I, I would think that uh, James would be sitting down on that one. Coda in the line for the sweep. There's Carowell, just as we talked about Battier being so versatile. Carowell, Carowell can come off that wing position and rebound with the basketball. Battier directs trap. Yeah, he wants to take Haywood on the dribble. They ought to get it right back out to him. Carwell inside. That was not a good play by Duke. You had Hayward with three fouls, matched up against Battier, who's outside. The ball should have come right out to Battier. He could have taken Hayward on the dribble and taken a chance to pick up that fourth foul. Loser plays behind Hayward. Brendan moves in, slapped away, but a foul. And there's a case again where Battier realized that Boozer was not in good position, came from the weak side to help out. They would actually have the little drop step right handed hook here didn't realize it went the other way and here's Battier from the weak side coming over to help and it will be Battier charged with a foul his second Haywood has been scoring great of late he had 24 points here last week in that Maryland game a strong second half Saturday in Atlanta against Georgia Tech but nothing doing tonight only two. And misses both free throws. In that Maryland game, he was 7 for 9, 10 for 11 from the foul line. There he misses the pair. Rainbow 3 won't go for James. James loves to sit out and po actually post up on the outside. 4 to That's his shot. Haywood. Another offensive rebound for the Heels. Capel, no. Haywood. Offensive rebounding. Big advantage, North Carolina. Can they get some more up on that glass? 43-29. And again, the crowd trying to push the Tar Heels. Here is James, blocked by Coda. And it's going to be rebounded by Haywood, but he lost it. James. Duke will have it. Is Williams okay? 
Williams twisted his ankle. And he is the one guy position wise that Duke doesn't have an answer for. Now here's this great offensive rebounding by North Carolina. He would finally puts it away. Jason Williams. Here's Dunleavy. Kick out to Carowell for three. Good. Chris Carowell, a 43% three point shooter. Second time tonight, Dunleavy has slashed to the basket, come to the jump stop, and made a good play. Williams on the push. The first on the freshman from Plainfield, New Jersey. Now, earlier in the season, Williams would take individual challenges on the dribble and pick up a lot of cheap fouls. Coda hasn't challenged him with that dribble tonight. You've got to make that freshman want to take on one-on-one -on -one challenges and let him play not so much with his head as he plays with his heart. Coda. You can get the ego trip going in a freshman early. Coda with the experience you can try that. Saved by Battier. Boy, this is a calm, collected due team. How they have gone through the ACC road wars and come up victories at two straight years is mind-boggling. Jason Williams didn't have enough smoke on that one. It's a pretty good offensive set. Forte. And Carowell again showing what a defensive player that he is. How about the five, five seconds? seconds right yep. there? Now just think, you know, he took on Solomon the other night from Clemson. Leading scorer in the league. Solomon at the end of the first half when the game really was completely lost by Clemson. 0 for 7. McIntyre last year. Steve Francis last year. I mean, he can take on guards. He can take on forwards. He really can defend. And there's Carolina going to their zone. Duke surprisingly has not tried at all to work on Haywood's fourth foul. Carowell. Kick out Christensen. Hand off Williams. <laughs> Missed the three. Dunleavy slams into Capel. Wow. Mike Krzyzewski can't believe that. Dunleavy had two hands on the ball. And they're going to call Dunleavy for the foul. A timeout with 15.55 left. Well, speaking about resurgent, how about Clemson with those two wins? Yes, huh? very impressive victory. Last night at Little John, their second beat NC State there, and Williams picks up his second. Little trip on Williams' part. Mike Krzyzewski in that timeout, really working the official. You got to remember that technical foul called on Phil Guthridge. Mike Krzyzewski uh, wanting to push those refs a little bit. Another foul called against Duke. Really picking them up here in the second half. That's six team fouls on the Blue Devils. No team fouls on North Carolina. Dunleavy with his first. You will see with this lead, if this continues, Mike Krzyzewski in the next close call start really baiting. Second foul on Dunleavy. Here's Coda penetrating. Now backs it up, dumps it into Haywood. Through Lang's hands and out of bounds. Another turnover there. No play whatsoever. Haywood should have taken it right to the hoop. Bill Guthridge of the Tar Heels down 17. Now Duke has not had real good looks from the three, but against his zone, I'd expect them to go ahead and get a three-point opportunity on this possession with a much better shot than they've had so far. 15 on the shot clock, Carowell, foul by Coda. First on Ed. You notice what Duke does against this zone. They just put four fellows on the perimeter, look to penetrate, then kick out, knowing that anybody they kick out to is capable of hitting it. Although they have not shot well from the perimeter tonight. As you look at Carowell's scoring numbers for the year, he's got now 10 tonight. Billy, you talked about his great defense on some of the big scorers in the conference. His assists, his total game, I think you'd have to say at the halfway point of the season, we're looking at the player of the year in the oh, ACC. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Number three in assist turnover ratio. Takes on the toughest defender. Number three score. What more can you ask of him? Forte. Oh, short. Well, he's a, he had to be touched somewhat there. Forte's looking. You know, he's not
not going to shoot a shot three feet short when he's eight feet from the basket. 24 seconds on the shot clock. Straight man now by Duke on the inside as they played all night long. And Christensen on Haywood. With weak side help from Battier. Dakota drives. Dakota scores. He's got that shot down. 48-31. He is so dangerous when he gets into the bank. Dunley. Oh, what a reverse! Off the glass! I'm telling you, you see more and more from this kid every time you watch a play. And look at that hustle by Battier. Capel, though, saves it over to Coda. Hard bounce to Forte. Beautiful pass by Ed Coda. I, I bet you the Duke players didn't believe what Dunleavy did on that play. <laughs> you know, there's certain guys that they just keep coming on. Check this out. Williams hurt his, hurt his finger. Look, he goes on the other side, right by Haywood, a good shot blocker, and finishes. 50-33 Blue Devils. 14-15 to go in the game. Well, Boozer was open with Haywood on his back. They didn't hit him with the ball. And that pass rifled out of bounds by oh, Williams. And, and Mike Krzyzewski is really hot at Williams. And Jason will come right out of the game Absolutely. and get an earful. I guarantee you. Get over here. And Mike Krzyzewski says, get over here. Again, it's a matter of thinking as the point guard. Young guy has a lot of talent, but Mike Krzyzewski wants him to be the point guard he needs to advance this ball club. And now he puts him right back in the game. It was just to give him his two cents worth. Nate James brings it ahead. And I'm sure that Jason Williams got the point. He <laughs> is. Yes. No point. uncertain terms. James. Nice pass inside. Capel picks up his fourth. I really think Duke, with this nice working margin they have right now, knowing that uh, a key to the comeback for North Carolina would have to be Haywood getting involved in the offense, I'm really surprised they haven't put that ball down to Boozer and make Haywood guard him a little. This broadcast is a copyrighted presentation, and the use of it without the express permission of Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports and the ACC is prohibited. Bob Rathman, Billy Packer, great to have you with us tonight. Williams with the penetration and kick and Dunleavy, long with the three. Williams from 15. Those long rebounds there. Williams filled up the slack that time. Oh, good change by Forte. Max Owens. Williams, nice toss ahead to Carewell, but he can't control it. He went up, the ball went down. He just misjudged. <laughs> Mike Krzyzewski's telling Jason Williams just to settle down. There was a case that the pass didn't have to be quite that hard. That's a big break for Carolina because Duke could have really extended this lead. Again, Cotto walks inside. Boy, you wonder where is it, you know? And reaches double figures, but the Tar Heels are still down by 15. Carolina stays in the zone, packing it back inside. Carowell took the body contact, never lost his concentration. And he just jumps right over the top of extended hands by guys like Owens. 52-35. The second half shooting is Forte barrels and in. And goes. Count it. Foul on Dunleavy. Boy, you talk about a tough shot. Joseph Forte. Well, I really admire the patience of this young guy when he plays out there. He never tries to push his, push things. Of course, the MVP in Maui, so he started his career in great shape. With the exception of the game against Wake Forest, he's been extremely consistent throughout the entire year. Forte misses. Boozer with the rebound. 52-37 Duke. Boozer. Okay, with a nice rebound. He did not come out to take Boozer. Boozer does have that shot. Forte. Again, the 
You see what happens when Capo penetrates inside the paint. Everything breaks down. 13 point Duke advantage. Mike Krzyzewski sensing his team getting out of rhythm calls the timeout wisely. He tries to take this crowd out of the game. They were starting to get into it as well. 52-39 Blue Devils. 11-48 remaining in this second half. We'll return after this message from the Atlantic Coast Conference. Well, Duke tried the timeout to try to get the crowd out of it. It didn't work. The Carolina faithful standing and roaring. Battier shuts him up with a three. Boy, these veteran players show such incredible leadership for this team. They hit the big shots, get the big rebounds. Peppers pushes off on Battier. That will be the second foul on Julius. 11.32 remaining in the game. Duke with Shane Battier drilling a three. Leading Carolina 55-39. Fifty-five, thirty-nine, Duke and Billy. One of the matchups that we've been watching tonight, of course, is the one at the point. You've got the senior and Ed Cota for North Carolina, the freshman Jason Williams for Duke. Well, I think in the second half, Cota has started to put the ball on the floor a little bit better. He's gotten two fouls that the Williams picked up. I think Williams has got to realize when you have the nice lead, and here you see that matchup: Ed Cota with ten points, Williams with seven assists, about equal, and they both have a. More turnovers than you'd expect for them. 11 turnovers between the two of them. Carolina picks up full court. You don't see this often from them. What I think happened to Jason Williams, he kind of fell into a pattern there with a nice working margin that Duke had. He looked to hit the home runs every time down the floor. He took him out of their offense. Loser. Too strong off the glass. Well, that really is there, though. Half hook. He loves that shot. And he can hit that shot. 55 41 Duke. Let's see if Duke doesn't start to go inside a little bit more. Hoosier's getting excellent position. This time Owens fronts Carowell. Congestion in the lane. Cota comes out of there with it. Oh, they got four on one here. Cota gets it back, looks it in. to 12. The biggest lead for Duke tonight, 19. Williams. A good shot to take. And he knew it the second it left his fingertips. Williams are really not making good judgments here in this second half of this ball game. It has given North Carolina a chance to get back in the game. Plenty of time left. 10.07. Lang again. Good again. Krzyzewski needing another timeout. Excellent comeback move here by North Carolina. The Tar Heels have cut it to 10 with 10.01 left. Chris Lang. The sophomore from Gastonia, Billy, a summer virus that cost him shin splints this season. But boy, when he's in that lineup, he can make things happen inside. Well, absolutely. As a sophomore this year, had it not been for all of these problems he's had, I really think he'd be one of the premier players in the league. There was that the floater by Coda and back in the lane. He can shoot it right or left. As long as he doesn't get pushed out beyond like 12 feet, that shot for him is really excellent. I don't think if you ask Mike Krzyzewski, you come into this place, or any coach for that matter, you expect North Carolina to make a run at some point. But Duke still, Billy, has a 10-point lead. How they play these final 10, it's going to be fun to watch. Well, much more aggressive defense now by, by North Carolina. Duke ball. 23 seconds to shoot. Boy, the defensive intensity has really picked up in the last uh, 
three or four times down the floor. Let's see if Duke can meet the challenge. Carwell lost the dribble. They're doing it. Capel he kicks. Walks. Capel got by with a walk. This crowd is going crazy. Carowell. Tough shot and the foul. How often have we seen this young guy come up, whether it's from the foul line, whether it's on the defensive end of the floor or the big shot. Time and time again this year. You know, this team has played in four overtime games. Yes. And they lost that first one to Stanford, but have won all the others. And in almost every case, this guy is the guy that comes up with a big play. It was fantastic against Virginia in that overtime game. 25 in Charlottesville. Carol Will has 16 tonight, 10 in the second half. 58-48. Carolina would love another hoop to keep the pressure on the Blue Devils. Good block by James from behind. Again, I don't know why teams are getting out of a pattern. When you get a guy like Lang hot in the inside, getting the ball back down there again, put that pressure on Duke to have to guard him. Lang steps out to get it. Backdoor cutting Cable and James with a reach in. Yes, he did. He held. He was beat on the play on the backdoor cut by Capel. He picks up his fourth. You see the play right here is where he grabs. If he, and if he hadn't grabbed, of course, Capel's got the ball in there. So that's what a foul is when you make contact and gain advantage. So Nate goes out. Carlos Boozer back in the game with 8.59 left and Duke leading 58-48. Duke basically playing with seven players. A shocking number. Yep. Tar Heels 0 for 6 at the free throw line. And they are a 70% free throw shooting team, so it's not like they're bad uh, from the foul line. Chance to get it to eight. Sophomore from Chesapeake, Virginia. More noise in Chapel Hill. North Carolina staying in the zone now. Haywood and Lang both coming out. Good skip. Williams, he was not ready. Consequently, took a bad shot. Dunleavy into the paint. Left handed. Forte took it out. Duke with a fresh 35. Eight and a half to go. Carolina with eight defeats, three of them in this building. Williams penetrates. Back out to Carowell. Good rebound by Haywood. Good tension in this game right now. Caper. And Levy closes on him. Now it's Forte. Joseph with 12 showing on the clock. 11, 10. Get it to Coda. Let him go to work. The dish tipped away. Stolen by the Blue Devils. Carowell lobs it to Dudley. He gets it back and lays it in. Just a great two-on-one fast break passing by Duke University. Big swing bucket. A chance to cut it to six. Instead, Duke runs it back to ten. But you still get the feeling momentum in Carolina's favor. Yes, sir. Duke hadn't stopped them yet. Forte. And a jam follow for Haywood. Mike Krzyzewski screaming it was basket interference. And I agree with him. One of the things I'm looking at right now is Carowell is walking down the floor. I don't remember him ever coming out of this basketball game. I think he's really getting tired. 
Mike Krzyzewski going to hold the ball a little bit here. And the pressure just suffocated. Under seven to go, 60-52. In the Boozer. Great look at a foul. Good foul, though, by Forte. Boozer had an easy put away. You know, I think back, uh, there's so many incredible games between these two teams, but Duke last year with the three wins that they had. Back in 1960, North Carolina had three wins. Blew Duke out three times during the regular season. They get in the ACC tournament, semifinals. Vic Bubis' is first year as coach, and Duke wins the game. So three wipeouts, and then the upset. Boozer with his sixth point. And Boozer is an excellent finisher, so Forte was lucky to get a piece of that last one. And what a great job the young man has done at the free throw line. 78% three for three tonight. 6.54 remaining. Chris Carrowell leading Duke. Brandon Haywood trying to get Carolina back in it. Timeout in Chapel Hill. Back at Chapel Hill, North Carolina scored only 24 points in the first half. Ed Cota had only three. Philly, they desperately needed his offense in the second half, and he's responding. He's brought it in. There it is where I talk about him getting inside that blue paint area. He can pass from in there. He's got the great floating jump shots from in there, and he just breaks down the defense. But for some reason, he has been hesitant to do it in the first half. And he does have the good stand, still one-handed from three. Carolina ball, Coda with 15 points, 12 in the second half. Carowell really needed that long timeout break. He'll probably come back rested now. Not adverse to playing 40 minutes in a ball game. Haywood has not touched it at all in the second half, has he? Other than off that rebound. Just on the offensive board, yes. Forte. Coda. He's got that floater. 17 for Ed, 62-54. Nice job by Forte to create the double team need to make a, an opening for Cota. And Duke is going to start taking a little time off this clock each and every time down. Battier, tough pass in paint, and it's out of bounds to Carolina. What happened is the first thing that it touched out of bounds was Battier. So, even though Carolina hit it, Battier hurt his ankle a little bit here. You watch the play right here. Battier makes the pass, and it touches him as he's standing out of bounds. Coda again. Good again. Now, he raises his fist wanting to come out of the game, but he can't afford to come out of this game right now. He's going to have to suck it up. The Duke lead was 19, down to six. He went with a big block. Boozer uh, goes to that line again. I think it's going to be Forte on the foul, reaching in. The third foul on Joseph. And you notice how Bill Guthridge did not see, and there's the block on the inside. Good job by Awood. And Forte does a good job making sure that Boozer can't get the shot up. Hits the free throw. Well, he's that got his nice, eight point. Nice rotation on the shot. It's really nice to have a big man that's anchored down the center that you know is going to get to the line a lot. That can shoot up around 80%. Short. Haywood boards. Carolina has not been this close since it was 30-24 in the first half. And Williams trying to pick it up on Coda. Forte. From the baseline. And what we have right now is Coda's working on the headset with Jason Williams a little bit. He's trying to get that freshman thinking ego instead of making good decisions. Williams in and out, stays out. And that'll work on me even more. Coda ought to take him to the basket right now. Lobbed into Lang. Did not have control of the shot. Does a great job to keep it alive. Haywood. And Boozer the foul. Probably a pretty good foul by Boozer, but you can really feel the momentum swinging to North Carolina's way. Battier circles his guys around. 
and said, hey, we are not a basketball team that loses games. Start concentrating. There's Lang just battling. Great job by North Carolina in that exchange. Lang wanted that one, didn't he? There's a young man that's not supposed to be able to play many consecutive minutes. He's going out now, but he really sucked it up during that period. Boozer comes out. Duke actually gets small here. Second shot for Haywood. Out of time on his block. 438. Chashevsky has tried timeouts. He's tried to milk the clock a little bit with some possessions. Nothing has stemmed the tide, but that Williams drive helps. That was a sensational play. Only because of his strength was he able to pull that off. Coda for three. No. Haywood inside. Duke, as I said, is very small on the floor. Not a bad idea for Carolina to put that ball up in the glass and then just go attack it. Four-point game. Nate James for three. Air ball. Battier. And a foul on Haywood. And that for Brendan will be his It may be Cable. It may be Cable. It is, oh, it is Haywood. It is Haywood, his fourth. 17 fouls now on the Tar Heels. That means Battier will shoot one and one. But it, with this big advantage that Carolina has now on the boards, with Haywood inside, you think they get it up on the glass quickly. Don't let a lot of time go off on the clock. For the third time this season, Shane Battier has scored 20 points. He has a 20-10 game. 20 points, 10 rebounds. Well, he is a winner. This one pops out. 66-61 Duke. Well, Boozer missed the uh, second of two, and Battier as well. Through the hands of Forte, saves it. Dakota to Peppers and, a charge. and an offensive foul on Julius Peppers. And who, who's underneath the charge? I don't even have to let you look. <laughs> Number 17 taken by Shane Battier. 66 to 61 Duke, 333 left. A terrific drive by Jason Williams and a big slam inside for Brandon Haywood back after this. Our G game summary looks like this with Duke leading Carolina by five. Battier, we talked about 20 points, 10 rebounds. Coda has come to life offensively in the second half. Carolina turned it over a, a lot in that first half. That's calmed down in the second half. It really has. I think that Duke's defensive intensity really hasn't been quite the same as it was in the first half. And, and I think that Coda having the ball in his hands made much better judgments than having the ball distributed to a lot of people in the first half. 14 Carolina turnovers in the first half. Only five here in the second. North Carolina, man to man in it. Haywood holding Battier. He's got to be careful out there. Playing with four fouls. Williams. And, and you notice Duke is not taking advantage of that. Dunleavy misses. Rebound Duke. James out to Dunleavy. Well, Duke going to sit on that ball. Back in 1966, these two teams played to a 21-20 game, <laughs> which uh, Dean Smith instituted the four corners for the first time. We'll see Duke using a little of that concept here. Not exactly the same formation, but wanting to slow this game down. Boy, Haywood is getting by with pushes. I don't. I saw that before. He's going to pick up a foul here. Why he did that, I do not know. He did this on the, the, the last time down the floor. Watch him push Battier. I mean, there's no question it's a foul, and he's not even in the play. He's out of the game. And it comes with two minutes and 50 seconds remaining. I was really surprised, however, that Duke didn't go at Haywood a little bit more, you know, in terms of getting him out of here earlier. He's a real factor down in low, and Pepper, who, Pepper, who has very little experience, is going to come in to replace him. Of course, North Carolina still has a potent threat in the post to score with, and that's Chris Lang. 
but you've got the stamina problem now. I mean, yes. I realize there's only 250 to go, but he's going to have to play the rest of the way. So Battier back in the free throw line. His 21st point, his season high, 31 against Davidson. Davidson, a team that really shocked the ACC last yes. night. Overtime victory over Wake Forest. That makes the Southern Conference 3-0 this year against ACC teams and uh, sends that mark against non-conference opponents down below 67% in wins. Not a good sign. 68-61 Duke. Carolina needs a hoop right here. Can Coda get it for him? Jason Williams going way up to keep it alive. Lang somehow controlled it and put it in. I actually thought Dunlavey fouled him on the first way up. That pulls Carolina within five, 68-63. But, but they're going to have to come out and play here. Duke, Duke. is going to use up 30 seconds on the clock each time down the floor. We're in a two-possession game. And the Carolina bench signal says, get a man and go get him. Williams for three. Carolina could have numbers on the break if they get it out. Forte down the middle. Capel for three. Good. And they call a timeout. Maybe to set up the press against Duke. With 145 to play. I a think two-point game. I think Duke is a tired basketball club right now. Sixty-eight, sixty-six. Nobody getting back defensively for Duke. There's Lang on the inside. You see Dunleavy almost had it. And he goes up with a double pump over Battier and scores. Three excellent inside plays on this comeback. And here's the case where Duke just has nobody back. And you can see Carowell did not get out there in any kind of a rush. North Carolina has the momentum. And I think they're a fresher team right now than is Duke. The timeout story. Duke two, Carolina three. Both teams just about to go into the double bonus. The arrow favors North Carolina. Now let's take a look at matchups out here. Forte on Carowell. The way that we've seen it in the past, Carowell is the guy that likes to take the shot. A little penetration move. Forte probably knows that. Carowell, the spins. Loose ball, got it back. Great beat inside, and James plays it in. Sensational play by Carowell, who you had to figure was just concerned about getting control of the ball. 70-66. Coda stop and pop. Lang. Four field goals on this comeback. 70-68. Timeout, North Carolina. 68 seconds remain in Chapel Hill. 70-68, Duke over Carolina. Bob Rathman, Billy Packer, back in Chapel Hill. Look at the feed from Chris Carowell to Nate James. Boy, what a play. It really was, because Carowell lost the ball. James does a great job moving without the ball to get open on the inside. And then Lang for his fourth field goal, as I said in the comeback, Good grab with two hands and puts it back in. Huge possession for Duke. Can they keep the string alive? Their 29-game winning streak in the ACC on the line right here, the final minute of the Smith Center. Carowell moves in and scores. He does it time and time again. And you know he's the guy that wants the ball. You almost can go box and one on Duke at this time in the game. Did not let him beat you. Hustle play. Knock away. It's out of bounds. The ball belongs to Carolina. 36.9 seconds left. 27 on the shot clock. Carolina will have to think defense here, even if they do score, as to what they're going to do, because uh, Duke be able to run it out. They need two possessions. He's got to go to the basket. Near travel. 
Owens in the paint, dishes, Cape is scoring. Now they've got to come after, and Carolina does get the timeout. You'll be able to set up the full court press. With 24.8. Dunleavy coming into the ball game now. Mike Krzyzewski wanted to get his best ball handlers on the floor. Nice job by Max Owens. The clock winding down. It's excellent penetration. Capel's the man on the spot for the putback. Good job here. But again, as I said, Carowell is a tired fella out there on the floor right now. 24.8 left. The Blue Devils at one point led by 19 in this game. But Carolina with a sustained second half effort to keep whittling away at that lead. They've cut it to two. But as Billy mentioned, they still need the basketball one more time. They have one timeout to work with. They set up the press. And nobody guarding the man taking the ball inbounds right here. James needs a good solid screen. Doesn't get it. In the Carowell. Williams up on Owens and a foul on Max. So two free throws for Jason Williams. Well, I think back probably the greatest games between these two teams, 1974. Carolina eight down with 17 seconds to go over in Carmichael. And no three-point shot. That's right. Walter Davis hit that one to tie it up and put it into overtime. And then the game at Duke, Bobby Jones with the steal when it looked like Duke could do nothing but win a game. Jason Williams, two big free throws. 0 for 2 at the line tonight. This is the key free throw. Well, we saw Makes it a two possession game. A UCLA player make two very unusual free throws here when UCLA beat North Carolina earlier this year. Long. Carolina can tie with a three. And they've got to take it. I look for Capel. Try to get Capel free. Owens. Eight, seven. Here's Forte. It's a game! Five seconds to go, plenty of time. Carowell. Carowell fires. No good. Overtime. 1974. How about the foul? He got the three-point lead. The clock is winding down. Now, they tried that against NC State and it backfired on him, but I still think that's the play to make. Here's the shot by the freshman, Joseph Forte, that has sent the Duke game into overtime. A timeout in Carolina. We'll be right back with the OT. We're going to overtime, tied at 73. We want to show you that last sequence again, as Nate James' follow shot clearly came after the red light was on and the clock hit double zero. And you remember the free throw by Williams that missed would have made it a four-point game, and that's what gave North Carolina the opportunity. The tip goes to Forte. Carolina's first OT effort, and Forte long with the three. But for Duke, this is common practice. This yes. is their fifth overtime game of the year. The only one they lost was against Stanford. Top oh, shot oh. by Jason Williams. Amazing shot. Of course, I think the last time these teams went to overtime, it went double overtime back in 95. North Carolina winning 102 to 100. This is the 10th overtime game all time between these two. Carolina's won five, Duke's won four. And the push on Nate James. That, that's, game, that, game that's back, that game back in uh, in 95, it was Jeff Cable who made that shot a 30-footer at the buzzer to force it into the first overtime. There's the all-time history in overtime between these two. James fouls out. Brendan Haywood has fouled out for Carolina. That came with 250 left in regulation. As Max Owens, the junior from Macon, Georgia. And you go, back, the free throw. you go back to 1981, Mike Krzyzewski's first win ever against Carolina was in an overtime game. Remember Gene Banks hit the big shot in that one. Tied at 75. Jason Williams hit a big three to start the overtime at Virginia for Duke. 
Blue Devils went on to victory. He hit their first basket to start overtime tonight. Carolina, of course, will not have the use of Haywood in this overtime. Williams, beautiful. Tremendous look, and Boozer gets the dunk. And how about Boozer? That shot looked like it was going up. Instead of turning his head to rebound, he kept his eye on the passer. Two freshmen. Tremendous play. Forte. Joseph with the lead in. Tough break, and here's Lang. And Boozer with the foul. Lang has been a terror on the offensive glass. Billy, this is the play at the other end you were talking about. The heads-up play by Carlos Boozer. Absolutely, because it looked like it was going to be a jump shot, but he kept his eye right on the passer. But kind of looked like he called for the ball. Yep, very nice. That is hard to do. You just anticipate the shots going up. You get prepared for the rebound and don't see the pass. Chris Lang puts it in for his 13th point tonight. Chris with eight rebounds, five of them on the offensive glass. That's something we talked about at the top of the show that Duke is having problems with. Defensive rebounding. Duke with the ball and a one-point lead, 77-76. Carolina staying in the zone. Gives an opportunity for Duke to rest. And he inside the boozer, and he lays it in. But Carlos Boozer. Against the zone, you're not supposed to get it in there that easily. An uncontested shot. Caper. Shot clock at 17. Lang. Carolina's big advantage to go out and press Duke a little bit. They're the fresher team right now. By staying back in the zone allows Duke to hang on to it, use some clock, and not expend any energy. And even though it's a one-point lead, it's still a lead. Yeah. John Levy. Battier from the corner. 4-3. I, I, I really don't think this is in Carolina's best interest. They're playing against a tired team. Go make them work. Two possession game with 227. Overtime in Chapel Hill. Coda drives. Oh my God. Dunleavy boards. I really think Coda was looking to pass in that play, and without Hayward in the game, there's nobody in the lane. You gotta figure Lang's getting tired right now, too. He hadn't been able to play many consistent minutes. They do go man to man now. Got to go play him. Carraway. And another feed inside and another stuff for Boozer. Big breakdowns defensively by North Carolina. They are not going out and playing Duke. He came very passive. Carraway took advantage. Such a smart player. 84-78. Chris Lang. Big inside for Carolina, but the Heels have had no answer inside of the overtime. Pepsi players of the game tonight for Duke, Shane Battier. Huge game with 25, a big three here in overtime, 10 rebounds. Ed Cota has not yet scored in the extra period. He's got 19 for the game. The Duke Blue Devils have not yet missed a shot in the extra period, five for five. Boozer, three for three. See, a nice move by Duke to make Carolina bring it all the way up the floor without getting an easy pass in bounds. Occupy some time. Time becoming critical for the Tar Heels. 133 left and down by six. Forte, who sent the game into overtime, misses on the baseline. Coda, third try, yes. Oh, how does the smallest guy on the floor get two offensive rebounds inside? 84-80. This is an important stop right here for North Carolina. Duke understands that. They've won four overtime games this year. The only loss in overtime is that one against Stanford. One three, rather. Lost one. Carraway. <laughs> he is he something else? He is the man. And he has got to be tired. 
Am I wrong in saying that he has not been out of this game? He's been out of the game one, one minute. minute. Wow. He's going to play 44 minutes in the game. Both ends of the floor, tough defensive assignments. He drives to the basket seeing that opening. And how much does it hurt not to have Haywood available Ooh. in this overtime? Well, Duke has just gone right inside sure. time after time, even against the zone. And remember his fifth foul? Just a push foul that meant nothing away from the ball. 87-80. Porter might as well take it right to the hoop. No time to waste. Porte looks for an opening, fires, hits. Over Battier. He used multiple screens. Bill Guthrie's going to call another timeout. He's got a two-possession game here. With Johnny Dawkins shouting out. Owens the quick foul on Williams. Now remember what happened the last time. Williams missed the free throw that really could have put this game away. Could have turned it into a two possession game with Carolina only had time for one. So he's about in that same situation now. Four point lead. Turn it to six. You turn it to the four to the two possession game. But if you do hit both, it means two threes for North That's Carolina. Right. Two possession game, but still even it, right. They've got to have they've got to have two threes as opposed to a three and a two. Williams is one of five at the free throw line tonight. Long. Four point game. 40 seconds left. Still two possessions, so they, but they don't have to go for threes here. Forte with Carowell on him. Gives to Coda, splits the defenders. Battier the block. Coda the follow. Boozer with a huge rebound that Lang probably not being exhausted would have had a piece of. And Jason Capel fouls out with 26.6. A tremendous block by Shane Battier. Cota gets inside. Battier, 25 points. 11 rebounds. I remember one charge, a couple of blocks, and there's Boozer. As I said, Lang just couldn't get up off the floor. Mike Krzyzewski getting a little break for his team. It's going to be Orlando Melendez checking into the Tar Heel lineup. Pretty good leaper. Has seen no action in this game tonight. It's kind of surprising that Peppers wouldn't come into the ball game. At least he's been in this game. We're asking a guy that's been sitting over there for... 44 minutes to come in and do something in the last 26 seconds. Duke with 12 more free throw attempts than North Carolina. Short. Duke not staying with the follow through. 87 83. Second free throw. This one good. So just a two possession game. Max Owens. Some contact, no whistle. Oh, they're going to call that on Battier, forcing. Yep, foul on Battier. I think it was Melendez that he pushed out of bounds. Yep, and the last thing you want to do is to go ahead and commit a foul here. You want that clock to keep moving if you do. Now, you talked about Melendez, how he hasn't played tonight, Billy, at the free throw line for the season. He's just three of six. And a big spot here with 16.7 left in overtime. 88-83 Duke. Oh, he leaned it. <laughs> Little body English got it home. Yep, the follow through uh, was in the opposite direction of the shot, but it worked it in. And there's Lang going to sit down just to get his breath. And we should point out North Carolina's out of timeouts. Duke has three left. Melendez. Trying to miss. And, and he does. does. Carolina's got it down by four. Forte steps through, drives, scores. 10.8 left. 88 86. Got a foul here. Dunley is fouled by Peppers.
Duke was able to go ahead and utilize about two seconds there. But they have had problems making the free throws here in the clutch. Now what Mike Krzyzewski wants is an intentional foul because it was a push from behind with no attempt to go after the ball. But that was not the call. So Mike Dunleavy to the line for the first time buries it. And again, like Williams had at the end of regulation, this is the big free throw. Now, if you're Mike Krzyzewski, are you going to foul? Yeah, if it's four, you're not. If he but if he misses this, or do you let him have another chance? He's not going to foul now. 90-86. Forte with eight. Seven. Joseph. Matty A just trying to make him use some time. Carowell rebounds, and the Blue Devil streak continues. Terrific basketball game here. Tremendous intensity by both teams. And Duke's first half is what really put Carolina in a big, big hole.